Once the Clone Wars erupted and war engulfed the whole galaxy, the Republic was forced to recruit various military officers from local planetary defense forces and turn them into admirals and generals for a galactic-wide army. This, of course, caused early problems within the Republic military command, as most appointed admirals and generals were required to quickly adapt to the great deal of responsibility bestowed upon them, resulting in many to make mistakes during their initial campaigns due to lack of experience of leading such vast armies and fleets into battle. Nonetheless, as time went by, most of the Republic's high command was able to adjust accordingly and become experienced leaders for a galaxy-spanning war. Except for one man, Kendall Ozzel, who was likely the worst commander within the entire Clone Wars and an embarrassment to the entire high military staff of the Republic. Ozzel grew up to an extremely wealthy and well-connected family within the core worlds prior to the outbreak of the Clone Wars. Once of age, he attended a prestigious naval academy on Coruscant and later graduated as senior captain for a small but well-respected defense force. But as time went by, it became clear to his superiors that Ozzel was not suited to serve as a field commander, and he later was transferred to simply teach at an academy on his home world. Once the Clone Wars broke out, Ozzel was able to use his family's connections to grant him a high position within the Grand Army of the Republic. His personal support of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine granted him a special assignment to oversee a military campaign alongside Jedi Generals Plo Koon and Kit Fisto on the snow planet Krom. Right from the start, Ozzel came to butt heads with the Jedi Generals on the mission, as their careful approach toward the enemy went directly against his overly aggressive, guns-blazing strategy in battle. Ozzel also saw conflict among the very clones that he oversaw, viewing them as disposable assets for the Republic that could easily be replaced if needed, even making such dehumanizing comments right in front of them without sympathy. At one point, Ozzel ordered his walkers to fire upon a position that Jedi were at, nearly killing them all with his recklessness, and simply excusing his action to the fact that the Jedi were more than capable of taking cover. Despite his overconfidence of steamrolling the enemy with sheer firepower and force, the moment the tide of battle went the other way, Ozzel's true colors exposed him as a simple coward. When a Jedi master he was leading an attack with got killed by Ventress, Ozzel ran far from the battle and cowered behind cover, becoming frightened that the entire mission was now solely on his shoulders. Once it became clear that he and his men had no chance, Ozzel immediately surrendered without a second thought, only being taken back to reality when he was reminded that droids rarely took prisoners. Fortunately for him, this time they did take prisoners due to Ventress requiring information on the advancements of Kit Fisto and Plo Koon. At first, Ozzel attempted to act brave in front of his captors, refusing to tell them anything and reciting the treaty that allowed him to stay quiet while a prisoner of war. But Ventress cared not for any war treaties, decapitating a clone right next to Ozzel in order to intimidate him. Despite being told to not tell her anything from the other captured clones, Ozzel caved in and revealed everything she needed to know about the Second Republic assault. When he and the remaining clones were escorted in their holding cell, the troopers had little patience with their so-called captain, calling him out for risking the entire Republic operation just to save his own life. The moment his cowardice was called out, Ozzel reminded the clones he was their superior officer and that they had to obey him, to which the clones reluctantly obliged. Ozzel and the clones were eventually able to escape after stealing a Separatist tank. Once they were able to regroup with the main clone forces, Ozzel regained his confidence and ordered yet another reckless attack on the Separatist base. But almost immediately after giving such a command, the Separatists charged at them with a far larger force than expected, resulting in Ozzel attempting to surrender once again. But before he could meet his demise, Republic reinforcements came at the last second and destroyed the incoming droid attack. Once again, back in a position of power and safety, Ozzel's overconfidence returned, treating the whole situation as his genius plan that worked out flawlessly. Eventually, with the combined forces of the reinforcements, along with Plo Koon and Kit Fisto's army, the Republic was able to take over their last remaining separate space on the planet. Despite Ozzel's constant cowardly and reckless actions that nearly sabotaged the entire Republic campaign on the planet, he was praised and even rewarded for his actions by Palpatine, resulting in the man to take command of his own ship and starfighter group. For during this time, the Supreme Chancellor had to retain favor of the powerful families of the Core Worlds if he wished to be appointed Emperor. 
even if it meant knowingly putting incompetent fools into positions of power. Although Ozzel's ability to fall upwards continued well after the Clone Wars due to his family name, it would ultimately lead to his downfall. He eventually rose so high in the Imperial military hierarchy that he became the Admiral of Darth Vader's personal ship, and his family's power and wealth had no bearing on the Sith Lord who ended up executing Ozzel after the Admiral made far too many careless mistakes, ending the man in his life of failures and bringing relief to all those who would serve under him.